Hi, I'm Jeff Foxworthy, and welcome to Gamekeeper Podcast. If you want to learn more about farming for wildlife and habitat management, then you are in the right place. Join the Gamekeeper crew direct from Mossy Oak Land Enhancement Studio as they discuss the latest wildlife and habitat management practices, news, and of course, hunting. There's no telling what you'll learn, but I'm going to tell you, I bet it's interesting. Enjoy. We're live in three. Two, one. All right, everybody. Well, welcome back to the mole hole at the luxurious. The new and improved. Gamekeeper, Gamekeeper Studio. Studio. Yeah, it looks really nice in here. We, Bob, did you see Bobby's decorating skills coming out yesterday, Dudley? Yeah, it looks great. I think it does, too. Um, what do they call that? Um, feng Shui. Feng Shui. Feng shui. <laughs> There it is. I don't know what feng chi. He, the chi is is really good. A lot of positive energy. You got the mm-hmm. Gamekeeper green. You got the bow uh, glow in the corner. Yeah, we do. A lot of little mounted animals. Yeah. Taxidermy work. I like it. Old decoys. Cottages. Yeah, so have y'all had a good week? <laughs> so far, so good. I um, can't complain. Well, Lanny, I've got a, a, you know, I'm dying to know, have you and Hayden had a deer hunt since we sat last time? We have had a deer hunt, you know, and he is going through the old, ooh, I should have shot that one, uh, phase. So, you know, he was he was dead set on, on you know, getting him a, a nice first buck uh and passed on a couple of deer he probably shouldn't have and then had a had a had a you know we've had a lot of good encounters and he's had buck fever several times so it's been it's been really cool to see that uh but he is yet to put one on the ground so what usually happens is we go hunting and then a lot of does come out and right. he's like hey i'm gonna wait the does leave and then he starts man i wish those were still out there so i can out. shoot at them so is he picky uh, yeah, he was. <laughs> He's not as picky as he was at the beginning of the season. So, yeah. I mean, you know, we're well, having a really good time. No, it's totally his And experience. he is really into, like, the whole deal. It's, you know, I think he's really into more going, setting up, you know, the win, what's going on, than even, you know, shooting in the first place. My whole deal, girl, is I want to shoot one, you know, right off the bat. Right. And he's, you know, he's harvested deer before. He's just on the buck hunt this year, so. Well, are they uh, are they tormenting him? Does he talk about it all the time? Yeah, yeah. When he's sitting there quiet riding to school the other day, I'm like, why? Well, because you know he's like me. He doesn't. He's quiet when he's asleep. Uh, you know, when I was a <laughs> when I was a young child, I was older than Hayden, but I was in my teens. Uh, my parents woke me up. When woke, I woke my parents up one night. I had taken a deer head off the wall and was wrestling with it in the, in the bed, but I was asleep. I guess I was dreaming. Huh. I had a recurring dream as a child about deer hunting a lot, and I would, you know, the deer would be right there, and I, I couldn't maybe get it all together. And then every now and then in the dream, it would all come together, and the deer would go down. And this is the craziest thing. I would walk up to it, and I would— Try to grab his rack to pick it up, and, and the horns would break off. Oh, oh. All right, oh. you know that's happening a lot lately. I've seen that on Facebook. Some guys that you know grab picking up because. But this, that's from like late season shit. No, it wasn't like late season. It was just you know, just a, I don't know. Maybe you know that would really kind of spoil the mood uh, to, yeah. to go to grab him and the horns pop off. That's yeah. a pretty cool story. My my dreams had nothing to do with that. I would, you know, show up at school without any clothes on or I've something had those like too. that. You ever had the cross-eyed dream where you're cross-eyed? No, I have not. <laughs> you one. need that one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know, uh, Cheryl Teagues and Farrah Fawcett were in a lot of them. Oh, I got you. I got you. Back in the day. Back in the day. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. So, Dudley, what about you? You and uh, Little Dudley had any hunch? No. Uh, we've we've been focusing on you know good old soccer. Uh, I remember those days when my dad had to go to my soccer games. But uh, yeah. yeah, this is kind of that time of the year when the rut's over with. I was going to say that, and I don't know. I, I was telling my wife the other night. I don't know that I have ever been in West Point this week. No, I've never S- since in I've twenty years been to work at Monsieur because we're always years. at the shot oh, show or right. getting ready for the shot show or. Something. I love being here. It, it really feels <laughs> yeah, January kind of awesome. and February is just show, show time. It, it really is. Yeah, yeah. But and you could you could almost feel, to your point about the deer, you know, is like 10 days ago, it's still, you know, crazy, you know. And then it's like 
I don't know whether it's length of days or everything else. It just they just you're, start hearing, changing. And you're hearing frogs croak yeah. while, while you're out yeah, there. Yeah, good old honey. It's really kind of weird. It's feel the freezer time. You know, it really is. That's yeah. that's probably what I'll do. Um, see if I can't go somewhere close to town and shoot a doe or two one mm-hmm. afternoon. Get stocked up before so she my, goes out. My daughter and I hunted last weekend. Saturday afternoon, we saw like 15 does and not a single buck. Now, you back that up two weeks, that wouldn't have happened. Uh, that's that's exactly what we're seeing, too. Mm-hmm. Exactly what we're seeing. It's way different. So while I'm thinking about it, before I leave, because I always forget this, this week's episode is, is sponsored by the Gamekeepers Magazine. Hey, we, man, those are some really cool guys. I don't know if y'all met them. Yeah, we, 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 we love that magazine. <laughs> yeah, we, if you don't subscribe, you need to subscribe. <laughs> it comes out quarterly. Every time a season changes, there's a magazine hopefully in the mail to you. It's 156 pages of really need-to-know information. And uh, you When's the get, next one coming out? It'll be spring. Spring. It'll be the next season. So it'll oh. mail about the first first of March, I think. All right. I hope. Yeah, we yeah. try to get it there just right before that actual season starts. Yeah, we try. and uh, the But it's the GameKeepersClub.com is where you can go to sign up. 20 mm-hmm. bucks a year. It's a deal. Yeah, and a new website's coming soon. Yeah. Let's see that. <laughs> hey, it's been a long time coming. Yeah, so if you don't subscribe to Game to the GameKeepers magazine, I'm just inviting you, uh, suggesting strongly, because it's a really, <laughs> really good magazine. Inviting. And, uh, you know, we all uh, we all enjoy it. It's a labor love. It's We've been doing it over love. 10 years. It's way over 10 years now, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. You can even subscribe a buddy or or a neighbor that you're wanting to turn, up, turn on to the GameKeeper magazine. Turn them into a keeper. Yeah, yeah. that's right. Mm. And and if you don't subscribe, you can go to Tractor Supply or Walmart or Bass Pro Shops and just pick up one, and you'll see how good it is, and you'll want to subscribe. There so, you go. There we go. That's that a little business out of the way. So, blood on the biologic is yeah. just. Uh, well, it seems like the Midwest guys are in the field of freezer mode. You know, I've seen a lot of. I've seen a few blood trails on the snow. You know, and a little bit of that. Red but carpet. Red carpet, you yeah. know. I'm so jealous of that. I know, me too. Rayleigh, you know, yeah, ran he, down there in the afternoon when we had our great blizzard of 2000 and what year is it? 21? 21. 21. That uh, three quarters of an inch. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Well, I tell you what, if you if you go to a local processor, it's, it's amazing. You got to stand in line, get a number, and just wait. Yeah, this is the first time, you know, the one of the effects of the, the whole pandemic is an increase in license sales, the first we've actually seen in 25 years. I wonder what that increase is. I don't know. I've looked at, you know, I've seen some state state numbers, and they're talking 10, 12, 15 percent, you know, up to 20 percent in some states. I think that's um, great. I think it's too. It's awesome. It's awesome for the sport. So I think that's probably, you know, obviously driving it. This whole, uh, we're going to talk to, you know, uh, Robert Arrington with Deer Meat for dinner today, which is all about, Catch, clean, cook. We call it field to plate. Um, you know, so I think a couple things are going on there. People are, you know, wanting a more localized source of, of food and protein. And, you know, uh, they're also at the house right now. So. Yeah, looking for something <laughs> to looking do. Looking for something to yeah. do. Yeah, it's probably a, a really good thing for most deer herds yes. to have a few more animals removed from it. Yeah, especially in the south. You know, we have an extremely high deer density. It is a uh, – I mean – Probably one of the most labor intensive things about wildlife management in the South, honestly, mm-hmm. is you know keeping your doe harvest where you need it to be. Yeah, that, that, that people struggle typically struggle yeah, you doing because if people are so into man, I don't want to mess up my you know yeah, the, the, don't want to the bucks, right. and the, but you, you got to do it. And before I forget it, also I wanted to ask you: Can you still go to Walmart and go down? Is there still a an aisle that's got all that game processing. Yeah, equipment. if it's not sold out, it's it is just like the processing thing. Uh, the gamekeepers uh, game processing line of stuff is. And what all is? Going, in, I mean, it's a bunch of stuff. There's grinders, vacuum sealers, uh, seasonings, casings, uh, everything you need to get started. At really good price points too. So, um, you know, I would suggest just uh, what I've done over the years is just add a little something every time, you know. And as long as I've been into it, I'm just now at you know full capacity. I just made my own first round of deer sausage this year, although I've ground and put up a lot of stuff before. So yeah, it's a real good way to get started. Mm-hmm. It really is. And so, it's at Walmart. It's at Walmart. It's great products, all engineered by Hamilton Beach Weston. 
So quality stuff at a great price point to get to help people out. Because I mean, the process around here, you can't even drop one off. Right. I've been right turned now. away a couple times, but so is you can bring the, them to my house. I'll take in, care of them well, for I'll you. I'll do that if I do. I have to pay you. Well, I don't. I charge by the by the loin. You might be missing the loin. <laughs> you might get half of your stuff back. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. So this is the, the and it's in the sporting goods section. Yeah. Walmart mm-hmm. too. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Sure so is. guys, y'all go check that out. It's some really good stuff. It's great stuff. It is. So Lanny, I had. Um, you remember back when we did had Jeff Lindsay on? Yeah. I had created a. Thinking that you might struggle with some of those questions, I had Obviously. created. Oh uh, no! Yeah, we go. I had created a question for you. <laughs> you know, you you got the first country. The, the question: Hank Williams Jr. Country Boy Can Survive song. Mm-hmm. You uh, you are the que- You got the question. Yeah, because I because Hank Williams Jr. is squarely in your wheelhouse from back in the day. I mean, I grew up. A southern boy. Yeah. I mean? So I had another question, and nobody knows this one, so the cat isn't out of the bag. So uh, we got Jason, and Mac is back from his vacation. Yeah. It's very relaxed. Oh, Steamboat Mac. Yeah. Mac, Mac. Yeah, look at him. <laughs> he needs to stand a little closer to his razor, it looks to, to me like. But anyway. He's, so, he's going for that mountain man look. Yeah. I like it. Yeah. So, Dudley, I, so I've got this question. So any of y'all that – do we, need, do we need to give me the, yeah, do we need to hit ring a buzzer or something? Well, if you know the answer, raise your hand. That way everybody they can hear it. Everybody, it out everybody, and everybody then, can then hear then it. You'll steal the answer. Okay. I know how you are. So here's the question real quick. All right. Um, so according to the song, A Country Boy Can Survive mm. by Hank Williams Jr. We all love that song. <laughs> what was his friend <laughs> shot for? And what did he want to spit in his eye? <laughs> So, wait, I, I don't know whose hand went up first. I'm going to say Dudley's hand went up first. Well, Lanny, I'm disappointed you didn't immediately just. This one is, I, I wanted mean, to let somebody else answer I'd, it. I'd, I'd be willing to bet that 95% of our audience knows the answer to that. And it is? $43. That's exactly right. And what he spit in his eye? Beach nut tea backer. Boom! There you go, Dudley. He gets a gamekeeper prize pack. Is that? <laughs> A I, tour of the biological Yeah, warehouse. I don't know if that's really a gamekeeper question, but... No, that was not a game, but that yeah. was one designed for you oh, that okay. I felt like you would be able to help pull Jeff through. Remember yeah. when we had the cosmic brownie for, just for Jeff? Yeah, that's right. But I do have a gamekeeper question if you want to try your luck. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Can I phone a friend? <laughs> <laughs> okay, they're all in here, so yeah. let's do it. Yeah, okay. All right, so here's one. All right. When a white-tailed deer gets wet, as in, it's raining. They always shake what first and what last? They shake their head first, if, then their tail last. Is that your final answer? That's my final answer. Dudley, do you want to weigh in here? Uh, you know, it would just be a guess. So, so it's there's it's a 50-50 chance. Here. Yeah. It's either their head first and their body last. or their Don't body we have first. some video of this there, young McElwain, our we vice do. president of YouTube? We do. You can Google it and find it. It's a really easy question to answer. But well, I probably not, got it wrong, I'm man. Not, I'm not going to let you answer it. So, but what is your final answer, to Lanny? Well, let me YouTube it right no, quick. No, no, no. We're not going to. Dudley, do you have an answer? I, I mean, I'm just going to guess, but I'll, I'll, I'll agree with Lanny. Head first. No. And you knew this before you asked this question. Oh, everybody knows oh, this. If, if you hunt much, it's just always so much. cool to watch them shake that head last. I guess, uh, you know, they're I always probably, thought they <laughs> I don't know. I guess I never probably, paid attention. They're probably shaking on the ground before I give them much of a chance to there do any go. of that. So, yeah. I'm okay. the one shaking when I see them. <laughs> All right. You want one more? Not really. Okay. okay. <laughs> <laughs> I know it's just tough. It is tough. <laughs> so, speaking so t- of... What? Go ahead. No, you go. Well, I was just going to say, tell us about our guest today. Oh, Mr. Robert Arrington. So, uh, we have... I've actually got exposed to... I say, I guess exposed is the wrong word to use in this time and age. I was uh, introduced myself to uh, Robert Arrington a few years ago. I actually, uh, the first year that you could legally, and I say legally, hunt gators... Uh, in this part of Mississippi, I got lucky enough and drew a tag. You know, where I live, I was able to hunt from the house. I actually got fortunate enough, me and my old, our old buddy Jordan Lasuzo uh, caught one in a John boat and brought him to the house. And I realized I'd never cleaned a gator before. Uh, so what do I do? Jump on old YouTube and start looking for it. And I saw a thumbnail of a guy with a mossy oak hat on. I was like, hey, 
this has got to be the guy right here. So this was years ago, and I don't know how many views he had at that point, but I went back and looked uh, when he decided, when we got hooked up and they were coming up here, and that thing had 9 million views at that point. So Wow, 9 million. Yeah, he is. Uh, I think he's probably one of the first guys that transitioned into digital media from the outdoor industry. And you all hear, of course, he'll, I'm going to let him tell his own story about how he did it and what's going on with it. But he reaches a lot of people. He really does. And, and his, I think one of his main goals is to recruit you know people into the sport, Yeah, uh, which is great. And obviously, you know, part of what we need to be doing as gamekeepers too so so some people would know him as deer meat deer for meat dinner. for dinner is his channel yeah um, okay and they you know basically what's they describe it as catch clean cook you know they uh again they'll tell his story but how he grew up you know it's just what he was exposed to and what he loved so yeah, he's pretty big time i yeah. mean you go to youtube and type the word deer yeah and it's gonna is. finish with meat for dinner mm -hmm. that's that's how big he is mm. So ironically, we I, Daniel and Jess they had talked to Robert at Shot Show a couple of years ago. Uh, you know, we've just been kind of following what he was doing um, more than anything. Uh, and I, we were sitting here at the office. Oh, I don't know, a few months ago, uh, and the phone rang, and it was a guy that uh, used to work here named Michael Fuqua uh, years ago, and he moved to Florida, um, got married, and all that good stuff. Uh, and he said, "Hey, I got a couple of friends down here that." you know, missed out on the whitetail rut and would love to, um, you know, come hunting in the black belt some, somewhere. And I was like, well, who, what, who is it? Uh, and he told us, and I was like, well, that's funny. You know, we've been kind of paying attention to what they're doing. So ended up getting together and inviting them up and, you know, uh, spent a couple of weeks with them. I mean, a couple of days with them here in camp, a few days with them here in camp. And it was just a pleasure meeting them. Um, so, uh, he'll be on today and uh, pick his brain about how he got started. Uh, it's a pretty interesting story for sure. Yeah, it really is. It is. I, lo I love his message. Yeah, it's a great message. It really is. Well, good. Well, why don't we – we're going to do things a little bit differently today. We've got uh, – instead of just playing the recorded commercials, we got Mac who uh, – Mac, is going to read the commercials. Mickey, Mickey, and then Mickey, uh, while Mickey, he's Mickey. doing that, Jason and I, uh, we can start coordinating and getting Robert on the telephone. So. All right. Mac, what you got? Is he a pro, pro hey, guys. Uh, spring's right around the corner, and for many gamekeepers, especially those in the north, it uh, means it's time to plant clover. And as gamekeepers, we love clover plots. Biologics Clover Plus and non-typical clover are two of the best clover products on the market. Clover Plus is a blend of New Zealand red and white clovers with chicory added. We see field consistently last six to eight years. Our non-typical clover is a white ladino with giant leaves, and it's late to flower, so that means it stays focused on forage and production longer in the spring, a critical time for antler genesis. Give Biologic Clovers a chance and learn more about them at plantbiologic.com. How about that? Mac, mac. You know, <laughs> that is a tribute to the Mississippi educational system. Right. Right there. Somebody he gonna, can read. <laughs> yeah, he yeah. can. I'm, he a can. Little, I'm a little worried we let him do that because some advertising firm is probably going to scoop him away. Yeah, he's going to be he's the, new, that, the next. That, the next. Uh, he's got that voice. All state guy. He'll, he'll be the macaroni and cheese for dinner. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I had to read it a couple times before. Uh, Get so, acquainted with it. Yeah, absolutely. Didn't want to stumble on it. Yeah, I heard him in there rehearsing. Oh, man. Well, guys, we're going to talk to one of our good buddies, Robert Arrington, here uh, in just a second. And, uh, man, he came down last week. We had some great hunts. It's, it's really interesting to hear his story. He's one of the uh, biggest phenomenons in the outdoor media right now, uh, especially in the digital media place. So we'll learn more about his story and, and what drives him. So excited to talk to him. We're going to dial him up. Thanks for calling Deer Meat for dinner. How may I help you? Boom. <laughs> That's what I'm talking about. Oh, What's yeah. for lunch? Yeah, we like to order something. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> We've got fried deer meat, uh, barbecued deer meat, boiled, sauteed. Deer meat kebab, you know, we got it all. Man, that's what I'm talking about. The forest gump of deer meat. <laughs> <laughs> that's not all there is, deer meat. So uh, what's going on in Florida? Florida Man, we're just uh, sitting in well, the new and improved Gamekeeper Studio just checking in with you. What's going on in Florida? I uh, just got done walking on the beach with my three-year-old Emma. She wanted to go down and pick up seashells. It was a beautiful day. And now we're uh, driving over the A1A bridge, heading back home. And it's just a beautiful day, man. It's a day that that makes you thankful to be alive. There you go. There you go. I like it. I do yeah. too. Every I bet it is pretty down there. What is the temperature? Yes, yeah, so I'm kind right of now. jealous. Uh, 
currently we are sitting at 62 degrees. Oh, wow. Bluebird skies, light west wind. And it's raining pneumonia weather up here. <laughs> well, uh, uh, Lanny's sitting uh, with a goose down jacket on yeah. here in the studio. We don't have any heat in the in the yeah. offices here. Kind of cold natured, you know. Yeah, you realize that that thousands and thousands of years ago, the birds figured it out. You fly south during the winter, and we have a place here that all of y'all can come visit any time that that pneumonia weather gets unbearable. Yeah, well, I'll show up now, mm-hmm. especially when it's especially when deer season's over with. So, uh, mm. Yeah, now you know. Now that I've got you guys on the phone, I do want to extend a huge thank you so much for having me and my brother and Kelly Young up to West Point. We got to spend time at deer camp with y'all and. And uh, more importantly, just spend time in the outdoors with y'all. That was a real honor. It was a blessing. I had a wonderful time. And I wanted to say thank you so very much. Well, the feeling's mutual, Robert. Absolutely. It's it's really good to connect with people. I mean, we've been following you uh, and what you were doing on YouTube. And it's really, really cool to, to finally meet you and then, you know, m- See, see what you what really what you're built of uh, is the best way to put it. And it was a pleasure having you and Gabe and Kelly. And Kelly got her first buck. Oh, Robert got numero yeah. uno, put some deer meat in the freezer, and then uh, oh, Gabe ended up killing his first Russian sow with us. Okay, so, yeah, is that right? yeah, man, it was a it was a fun trip all around. I watched your video uh, zipping that buck open, and uh, I believe he knows what he's doing. I knew exactly where you were. Yeah, that's right. I recognized it. <laughs> <laughs> we call that the good spot. <laughs> yeah. No, you know, when we slipped in there and, I, you know, I only had three days. And so the first day was kind of scouting, trying to get a feel for it. The second day I said, I just want to get somewhere where I can see a long way, spend some time on my binoculars and, and try to see what's available. And, you know, as it got daylight and I saw that giant set of, I honestly thought he was just a huge spike. But the second I saw him, I, I was like, I have got to kill that deer. <laughs> and so I only had a quick little bullet. And I, you know, I didn't have a rest. I'm shooting off my, you know, free-handed off my knee and uh, was able to make a decent shot, roll him. And, and that was super exciting, you know, getting back to the house, cleaned up. And, and then that night around camp there, just frying up deer meat like, like we grew up doing, you know, that's, that's kind of what we're all about. And what was awesome is that's what y'all are all about. That's 100% right. Mm-hmm. I love that camp life. Yeah, <laughs> it is fun. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, I, you know, Laney, I was really impressed with when we got there, y'all said, now this ain't, this ain't real fancy. I'm like, well, that, that, that means I'll feel comfortable. <laughs> I'm not a fancy guy. Uh, my truck, like right now, I got a rifle sitting over on next to my right knee. I got a bunch of, Sweet teacups and got a back seat is full of camo and deckum hunting gear. I'm not Mr. Fancy White Glove. I like to go. My life is best spent with my family in the outdoors, smelling fresh air, doing what we love. And you know what? When it gets too cluttered and too dirty, I'll clean it up again and we'll start the process over. <laughs> I'm not about fancy, I'm about memories. Yep. Well, and that's a cool chunk of land. It it doesn't have the greatest cabin on it. It it uh but it works. No, it works. And, a lot uh, of wildlife down there. Oh There's yeah, a it's it's a game rich place. Yeah, it's beautiful, man. And the farmer was super awesome. And you know, overall I I could not have possibly had a better time. And then, you know, to see old Numero Uno slipping through the thicket there and <laughs> you got a you got a split second to make a shot, right? You know, and luckily that all worked out. But that you know, that comes down to spending time on the range. I I'm fortunate enough here to have my own little shooting range at my ranch and I spend a lot of time shooting off a off a bench, making sure my gun is really zeroed. But then I spend a lot of time shooting sitting down, laying down, standing up, freehand. Uh, off a tree, off a fence post. Uh, I mean, I shoot as often as I possibly can from a variety of different angles. And every single time I'm saying to myself, if the deer's doing this and this is how I've got to be, how far can I be effective? How far can I shoot? How far can I be very, very accurate? Because I believe as a hunter, as an ethical hunter, we owe it to the game that we're after to be very accurate. 
therefore you can make a moral and ethical shot. You're not wounding something and, you know, letting it run off and, and whatnot. So hundred percent. Yeah. So big part of my life. Lanny, you need to spend some time. <laughs> hey, gonna bring, why are you bringing up old stuff, Bobby? <laughs> well, I mean, when he, well, every time he's, it, One, you were bubbling up in my mind yeah, the whole time sure. he was making that, that beautiful I, speech. I have to shoot at elk seven times. One time in my life. <laughs> well, yeah, that's listen, I mean, if you, yeah, if you're going to go on an elk hunt, who wants to shoot just one time? There you go. <laughs> Thanks. I appreciate that. <laughs> well, I tell you what, we talked to the guys last week at Nosler and Browning, and they echoed when when y'all came in here with that six five Creedmoor. You know, it's a, it's a new round to me. Of course, I, look, I'm a dinosaur. You know, so I'm like to do my old ways, my old things. Uh, but well, it's, it's a good round. Uh, I've been shooting it now for about four years, and I've had tremendous success with it. Uh, I've had to make I've had to make some really difficult shots with it. I killed my big bull moose up in Saskatchewan, muleys, whitetails, hogs. I mean, it's it's low recoil. It's got a really nice high BC, so it's a very efficient bullet. Um, I, people ask me all the time on YouTube, I'm going on a deer hunt. What cartridge do I need to buy? Or what gun do I need to buy? I'm like, you buy whatever gun and whatever caliber you want, as long as you can be accurate with it. And right. I always say, shoot something that doesn't have a ton of recoil and that you can be accurate with and then understand your limits understand how far you can shoot you know don't go get set up somewhere where you're going to have a three to five hundred yard shot if you only can shoot a hundred or 150 you know you, you've got to hunt in an area that you can be effective in a manner that you can be effective every single high-powered rifle on the market will kill the heck out of a deer or a wild hog or antelope or anything like that it what can you be effective with you exactly. can wound them with a 300 ultra mag yeah exactly good point yeah lanny can prove that it was a muzzle loader <laughs> <laughs> and he was wounded but we got him <laughs> yeah you got him we got elk meat for dinner in my house that's all i'm saying <laughs> and robert that's that's that's, right, man. that's what i like so much about your videos yeah, is, and your message um you are able to hold an audience, everybody from, you know, 101 to advanced. Mm -hmm. um, and there's something to learn in every video for everybody. And uh, it's all interesting, whether you're new at this or whether you've been doing it for years. Yeah, you can pick up on uh, that. So uh, well, how did I, you get into that? I really appreciate that. Yeah. So, so Robert, hey, fellas, hold on for one second. Hey, hold on for one second. This is to show how real we are here at Deer Meat for Dinner. <laughs> Mom, Emma has to use the potty real quick. Can you take her real quick inside? <laughs> no. I'm on no. a... <laughs> 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 oh, goodness, so that's my mom being my mom. I but, love um, it. That's uh, awesome. Well, yeah. you guys, I will give you... I will get... Hold on, let her get out of the car real quick. I love it. Uh, no, wait, Dudley, do you need to go uh, to the rest of your yeah. body? <laughs> <laughs> oh, All right, guys. Um, so I will give you the, 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 the brief but not so brief version of how this happened. Uh, back in the early 2000s, 2003, 4, 5, I was a captain down in Costa Rica running a big sport fishing boat, and I had an opportunity to be a part of a fishing show called Real Adventures. They came down. We did four episodes. It went really well. They invited me to be a full member of their crew. So I started doing that for a few, four, five, six years. Then I started my own TV show called Respect Outdoors. It was on Sportsman Channel. We were nominated for awards. It was really fun, but I was kind of a one-man band, and I was always more interested in telling my story and making videos than to then building up my sponsors. And so yeah. it was very difficult to do both and so over three years that i had the show i said man this is crazy i'm spending all this money on airtime and i'm not getting ahead nothing it, i have to tell more about a sponsor than i do about what i'm doing in the outdoors and then i started looking at youtube and a friend of mine greg mutsamides uh he was with me he said rob man you have a very interesting life i've been watching a couple youtubers and I think you should do this in the outdoors. And so um, 
Sarah, my girlfriend at the time, she had moved down from Wisconsin and Sportsman Channel was banging on me to renew a contract. What? I'm done with this because I've got to go out and film. This is a whole year process so that I can then have shows in the fall. And it doesn't, it doesn't seem to have any efficiency in it. There is no end game. I don't see how this becomes something that I can do for the next 20 years. And I really started, this was in uh, January, late January of 2013. I started really looking at YouTube and I said, you know what? I'm doing that. And I pointed my bow towards YouTube. Um, and I started thinking about it and I was in my kitchen cooking some deer meat one night. And I was, you know, every, everybody has been in that stage of their life where they're like, what am I doing? And is this worth it? And I was just questioning everything. And I was leaned up against my counter, looking at a cast iron skillet full of deer meat frying. And I was like, what do I love? What is, what is at my root? And I was like, man, I love deer meat for dinner. And I said, hmm, I wonder if there's a website called deer meat for dinner. And I went on, I went online, I typed in deermeatfordinner.com and it popped up like a scene in a movie buy now on buy now on GoDaddy 9.99 and i was like holy macro 9.99 if i only had 9.99 so i looked at sarah i was like hey do you have ten dollars on your credit card and she's like yeah what what are we getting and i said I, i'm gonna buy a url she's like well what is what is that i said it's i'm buying a domain it's beermeatfordinner.com She's like, well, what is it? I was like, do you like Deer Meat for Dinner? And she's like, yeah. I was like, right. We're about to own that name. And so does everyone else in America. And I didn't know exactly how I was going to, how I was going to do it. Hold on. Let me just tell my mom. Mom, thank you very much. I said, um, <clears throat> so, you know, I bought the name and I sat down and I, I made my very first video, which was just, a, just making deer meat for dinner and uh um that sort of went well well at that time the only way out because i wasn't doing my tv show anymore the only cash flow i had in the world was from guiding alligator hunts and hog hunts mm -hmm. well all of a sudden i went out and i had a hog and a gator in the cooler that i had to skin and i did a gator skinning video how to flash debone and skin out an alligator That's that started saw. working and then i did a uh you know, that's still my number one video to this day. It still gets, I mean, it's at 19 million views right now and climbing. I messed up. <laughs> um, but then I said, okay. I said, all right, well, what about if I cook it? If they like to see me skin it, what if I, what if I cook it? So I do a full video. I mean, just at one of my friend Cliff Ferg's house, we, you know, cook it up using some Everglades, which is normal for us. And, uh, off we go. Well, that was on a Friday when that video uploaded. And that following Monday, a girl named Kelly Harris from, from Everglades Seasoning calls me and says, we saw one of your videos. Now, at that point, I had 805 subscribers, 805. That video at that point had 1,200 views, which was a lot to me. And uh, she said, will you come out here and talk to us about using our seasoning? I said, yes, I drive out there. The very next day, we sit down and they show me their facility. It was just a little, little facility where they bottled their, their spices and had a little, you know, a little couple of offices there. I mean, we're talking real small. And after about an hour, hour and a half of showing me around, chit-chatting, talking, the owner, Mr. Chris Sebring, he looked at me and he said, how much would you charge me to use this in more of your videos? And I, I had no idea we were going to be talking about money because as you know, this is a process that, you know, you start off with like getting to know one another and then like, let me see what you can do. Right. And then we're going to tiptoe in the money. Heck no, man. The very first time I laid eyes on the guy, he said, how much? And in, as fast as I could, I went through my bills thinking, what bill will he pay? <laughs> and I knew rent was $1,000 a month. And I looked at him. I said, this is what I'll do for $1,000 a month. I guarantee you two videos a month. And at the end of the year, you will have 24 videos and you will have paid me $12,000. And that's going to be the best money you've ever spent in your whole life. 
And he said, that's a deal. He never questioned it. He never asked me for any of my analytics. He never asked me for anything. He simply said, that's a deal. And when he said, that's a deal, he stamped proof of concept on my heart. And I knew for a fact that YouTube was the answer. I went home and I asked him right. The next question was, when can we get started? And he said, I'll write you a check for this month and next month right now, which was amazing because I was a month back on rent. Mm-hmm. I took that $2,000. I came flush on rent and I started marching forward from then till now. I, my channel has accounted for millions and millions of dollars of sales for Everglades. I've never, ever raised his rate a nickel. He still pays me $1,000 a month. And every month I donate that thousand to a family that needs it. And the reason I don't raise his rate is because every single month, whenever I get that check, I remember how bad I needed it. And it shows me where I came from. And and I, I so much appreciate that moment in my life. And as I, as he wrote that check and tears rolled down my eyes, I knew boys, I am here. I have found where I need to be. (laughs) And now I have the opportunity day after day after day to tell my story to new people. And, you know, whether it's hunting or fishing or, or building a pond in my backyard with my girls or just cooking or doing anything, man, we have the opportunity to show the world that the outdoors is a wonderful place to be. It's fresh air, healthy living, and, and great times with your friends and family. I love it. That I, is a great story. Hey, man, I can't believe it doesn't work here. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I mean, the fundamental, I mean, y'all know all here, everybody here believes the more time you spend outside, the better your life will be. And I got to tell you, Robert is a shining example. He of really that. is. You he had really some is. positivity and confidence yeah. and you, you turn it into. And what, making what, it accessible for everybody. You turn it into what he's got now. I'll tell you one more thing, too, about Everglades, which is interesting. That how I was introduced to Everglades. Well, for one thing, Robert, how I, I'm, I guess, became aware with you is, I don't know if I told you, I drew a gator tag in Mississippi for the, the first year they opened season in our area. Got lucky from my house and, and caught a gator with a, one of the, our buddies that used to work here. Got home, and I didn't know what to do with it. So I jumped on YouTube, and there you were with a mossy oak hat on. And not only did I watch you skin that gator, this is the truth. I, the next thing I watched was you cooking it, and we ate the whole ga- we ate the whole gator. That's the truth. That is the truth. So I think it's it was it That's took us a little awesome. while, but it was destiny for um, for us to uh, to meet each other and you know develop this uh, de- develop this relationship. So yeah, it's super fun, boys. I, uh, I it was such an eye opening experience getting to come up there and spend time with y'all and get to know you. It's one thing when you meet somebody in a trade show and you're in a booth right. and everybody's dressed up and acting like they're the next best thing to white bread. And, you know, I, I, I don't, that, I, that just isn't me, man. It's not I us mean, either. It's not me. I don't, I don't feel comfortable in it. I don't like it, I, you know, but being out there in the woods, in the kitchen, doing what we do, that is where I feel like I'm at, at home and where I'm living my best life. So it was great to be there. That's cool. What else is going on? Man, speaking about the kitchen, you spent a little time with our buddy uh, Michael Hunter out there, too, at the cabin, didn't you? Yeah, what a fresh guy that is. I yeah. mean, like, Michael Hunter, you, you know, just spending time in the kitchen with him. You know, you spend time with – I've been around a lot of chefs and a lot, a lot of guys who think they're better than they are, and they have, like, this, uh, like this arrogance about them, like – this is my kitchen and this is what I'm doing. And it, whenever I was with Michael Hunter, he was just like, dude, this is amazing. We got beautiful, fresh deer meat. Let's have fun with it. And there's no set answers. It's just like, let's have fun. And like, holy cow, the food he made was amazing. And I was, he doesn't know that I'm going to, well, actually, I probably shouldn't even say it on this well, I guess I'll spill the beans. We can well, I'm going to have him come down to Florida. Yeah, I'm going to have him come down to Florida. I'm going to go out and I'm going to catch a bunch of my favorite seafood. Lobsters, crabs, oh, shrimp, man. fish. I want to go. I want to go. 
Yeah, <laughs> come on. And uh, I'm going to have him come down and literally put him in the kitchen, open it up and say, okay, go to town. Whatever you can do with this, go to town. But I don't want him to know what all is going to be in the basket until he's just there. And then see what he does and make a really fun video with that. Well, he'll light it up, I promise you. Well, I know y'all, you know, one night we had, um, it's interesting, and not, you and I talked about it, and Gabe and I talked about it, you know, there's a little bit of different tactics um, um, of when, when you, where y'all come from versus we, of how we age our deer meat. And, and I think you experienced with Michael, you had an aged uh, tenderloin and then a non-aged tenderloin prepared in the same way. Um, and I, right. I remember you talking about it in your video. What was there a difference in taste there? I mean, it's a common question we've asked online, and you're one of the only guys I know in the near future. In the in the in near, was that that's right? Why'd you say that, Bob? I don't think so. I don't think so. Don't worry, I'll mess <laughs> some more stuff. <laughs> in the recent, yeah, past. There's a little better. <laughs> <laughs> Lord, have Lord mercy. have mercy. Anyways, that has actually you know tasted those those things side by side, prepared the same way. Was there a difference? I have. It's funny that you're asking me that because it was something that I thought a lot about. The texture and the tenderness of the aged meat was almost exactly like like a, a beef tenderloin. It was amazing. Mm -hmm. The flavor of the aged meat was, in my opinion, a bit more gamey mm -hmm. than the fresh meat. But the fresh meat was a... I would say twice as tough. The texture wasn't as good. So you had a little bit tougher meat, but I really loved the flavor of the fresh meat. The aged meat was much more. And you know what? There was no gravy on the aged meat. So maybe, maybe that is a bit of a difference as well. Yeah. Um, Right now, as we speak, I'm doing a 20 day dry age on a venison on one of those venison hams that I brought home. Nice. One of the deer that I got from y'all. We're doing a 20 day dry age on it. We're doing the shank as octobuco, and we're doing the whole ham. And so mm. we're going to experience dry aged venison and see how that turns out. Cool. So I know it's a hot topic. What? So, Lanny, what's the ideal aging time? I mean, you know. I, I learned more about Agent Venison from Jim Cromley than anybody, uh, you know, and he was a 38 degrees for 38 days with the hide on. Hanging in the cooler. Hanging in the cooler. Now, look, you know, nobody, not many people have access to hanging coolers like we do, so let me preface that. So, you know, uh, but that and, – and I try to – I mean, three weeks is a minimum for me. I like to get them. I like to hang them four weeks. Well, I tell you, if you take one to the processor, you're not getting that no, treatment. No. It's a – you know they're they're processing it. No, you have to do, it. and they'll they'll they will skin it and then hang it with a little a few days with the hide off, where we hang with the hide on, keeping that moisture in. So I don't even know if it would be even considered dry aging. Dudley, would that be dry aging? Or? I, I think the fact that venison, no, that's not dry aging. That's yeah. just hanging. You're that's just, just hanging. hanging. Yeah, venison doesn't have as much fat in it, mm -hmm. and so whereas beef, you know. Yeah, but I, I like I like aging it mm -hmm. with the hide on it if I'm going to age it a long time, um, and uh, but I think that's where the compromise is. There's not enough. There's not enough as much fat, fat in the yeah. venison, but um, so if there was more fat in it, you could age you, it without the hide on. It. Right, right, gotcha. So what what is going on with the meat during the aging process that's making it better? I mean, what I've always been told is that the good bacteria lives below 40 and bad bacteria lives above 40. So basically you're just allowing that meat to naturally break down. And to Robert's point, it becomes more tender. Um, and that that right. is, and I hear you loud and clear because fresh deer meat had to me, the taste, he's right, is sweeter. It's not uh, as, you know, um, I love the minerally, you know, mineral kind of a taste, you know, the, the earthy taste and things, where as, um, you know, the, the aged in venison to me is more tender. Does it have a different look to it after 38 days? It's a little darker. It's, a little it's darker. oxidized. Right. Yeah. 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 It's and got you, a little bit darker look to it. A little darker. And um, I've done it in, in the refrigerator with bags, too. You just have to drain the blood off of it. So actually blood is actually coming out of it. I don't know where it goes. 
you know, when it's hanging with the hide on, I guess it just goes. One thing I've noticed about aged meats is, uh, you know, kind of, I refer to it as brining, but mm-hmm. or dry brining my deer meat. I'll I'll put salt on it yeah. about twenty four hours before I cook it. Uh, if I'm gonna, right. you know, kind of flash cook it in the skillet and then put it in the oven for a couple of minutes. Yeah. Um, it seems to soak in the salt and flavorings a little bit better when it's been aged. Yeah. And um, you'll see it sucking the moisture oh, yeah. out of there. Mm-hmm. It's really interesting to see yeah, you know, how so, different people do it. But I love it whether it's aged I or not. I love it, period. Yeah. That's right. Yeah, that's exactly Well, right. I'm going to throw this one at you guys for a second. What is taste? Okay, so, like, you're asking me what, what's the difference in the taste and whatnot. What's the difference in your experience? But taste is only an opinion. And what, what I mean by that, what the relevance to that is, let's say – we all went on an amazing hunt somewhere together. And there was some guy there cooking that we've never met before. And he made this really unique dish that was different than we've ever had in our life before. None of us had ever had it, but we're having the best time of our life. The weather's great. The facility's nice and everyone's getting along and we're just all smiles ear to ear. And then we go in and this fellow cooks up a nice deer meat or elk or moose or whatever it may be. And we all eat it. And we're like, man, that's so good. Like, holy cow, that's amazing. Like, it's different. I never had that before. But because of the experience, because of what's going on, our mind then tells us that what we're tasting is freaking good. Like, that's amazing. That's awesome. And over time, then we all go home, we all go our separate ways, and our mind continues to tell us what you had was amazing, and you need to have more of that. You need to do that again. And your mind starts just telling you that that flavor, that taste is amazing until one day you can taste it again, and you're like, aha, it is amazing. Yeah, I agree. It's the the whole experience. On the contrary, if we were all there and the weather was crud and two of the guys were arguing and it was just, and then you sit down and you eat that very same meal and you're like, it's just a meal, man. It's just food. I ain't never had nothing like this before, but it's just a meal. Mm -hmm. And you never remember it as being amazing because the experience wasn't amazing. That's why whenever I have people and I'm introducing them to deer meat or wild game, I want to experience, I want them to experience and understand the beauty of the outdoors. I want it to be a wonderful experience. I want the shot on the animal to be something that's digestible and it's not like gruesome. I don't want them to be fighting into the, the game thinking about a deer flopping around. And so I try with my videos to make very digestible videos where it's understandable, where I'm explaining the meaning, I'm explaining the value to what we do. And then I make the food in, in a way that people go, you know what? I want to eat that. And the reason they want to eat it is because the experience that they watched in the first two thirds of my video, that was an experience that they want to experience, which then is backed up going, I want to taste that food and together the catching, the cleaning, the cooking becomes something that they want to do, which is why I have hordes of vegans and vegetarians and anti-hunters that reach out to me and go, why didn't I see this before I become a vegan? Because I would, I want that in it. I can't even, I can't even comment on your videos because my friends would think my account got hacked. <laughs> yeah. That to me, is the very best comment and the best best message I can get is whenever my experience of what's happening in the field turns into food and people want to experience all of that. It was like when you're when I saw your mom spooning that squirrel out of the pressure cooker yeah. that had been brazing in there and it and made that gravy. Mm-hmm. Uh, I <laughs> I saw that that what you just said. You know, makes a lot of sense. 100%. I wanted that squirrel so bad. I could, I could smell it. Yeah, you, and I was watching a video. 
You walk outside in the trees. Yeah. <laughs> it connected. You just, what you just said connected the dots for me too. Cause you always hear people say you eat with your eyes as well, but I just never realized until you just said it. That that's why I love eating wild game so much and feeding it to my kids so much and my whole family enjoying it. Cause I'm really that experience you, you is translating to the table. Yeah. yeah. That's a great way to put it. That's right. Boom. Eyes that's open. Right. I'm doing, I'm doing a new line of appar- apparel right now. Awesome. Oh man, I really feel this. This isn't this isn't online yet. Although some of it's going to be on Mossy Oak Apparel. Uh, some of some of the Mossy Oak uh, hoodies that I'm getting are going to be uh, I am connected shirts and hoodies. But it is we're taking like we're coming up on turkey season right now. It's I am, and then we take a turkey and create the turkey with the letters connected. I am connected. But when you look at the turkey, you'll realize that you're looking at the word connected. And the reason is, imagine if, like, let's just say uh, someone came over to my house, you know, friends with whoever, and they've never eaten wild turkey before. They sit down and they eat, they eat some fried turkey kebabs or whatever, and uh, they're like, yeah, good, no big deal. But on the contrary, let's say I take them out and we roost the bird and we get out there and we call them in and uh, make a good shot, kill the turkey, and then we come back and clean them up, come up, come to the house, cook them and make a nice meal, that same turkey now becomes one of the best meals they've ever had because they are connected. And I'm trying to, you know, 20 years ago, 30 years, oh God, maybe no more than that, 30 something years ago, (laughs) whenever I started hunting with my daddy, part of the skinning shed was one of the most popular places. No, that's the spot. (laughs) That is the spot. You you know, you have a campfire there, you you have a campfire there and you hang the deer or hog or whatever Everyone's talking and what happened? I missed this one. I saw that one. I got lucky. You you always get lucky. You got the golden horseshoe, this, that, and the other. <laughs> Clean Bobby. the beer, then you come back inside and <laughs> and but over I you know, and I don't mean to step on anyone's toes here. I'm not saying this in a derogatory manner whatsoever, but over the past twenty years I'd say, it started turning into how old is that deer? How many pictures yeah. you got of that deer? Man, maybe you should let him maybe you should let him go one more year. You know what I mean? And it's you know, good Lord, can you imagine what he would have been next year? I don't care what that joker would be next year because we're going to eat him right now. <laughs> and and I'm, you know, with that same mentality, people stop spending so much time at the skin and shed and dropping him off at the processor. And next thing you know, they're picking up, you know, their summer sausage and cubed meat and ground meat, this, that, and the other. And, and they there's a break in the connection there because, yeah, they may kill it whatnot. But once they, you know, there's just a little bit of a break there. They're not yeah. cleaning that game. Agree, and there's yeah. something about getting the blood under your fingernails and, and doing that work yourself. And I really beg my audience to spend time. Maybe this is your first time and you're not going to be that good at it. But I guarantee you, you'll be better the next time and you'll be better the next time. And each time you're going to try, you'll start to remember, oh, I remember what I had to do here. Mm-hmm. And it, that becomes part of the experience. And, and, and you, you, start to desire that and it, it's fulfilling and then you want to show someone like hey man i've been watching dear me for dinner i learned how to do this check this out. i don't want to show you this you know and it becomes it becomes an environment yep so. Aw- awkwardness at the skinning <laughs> shed in my opinion is not the future of hunting no we were we were we were eating our own young with the trophy pursuit i agree a thousand percent a thousand percent you know and uh so we want everybody to be accessible to everybody. Enjoy it. And, and y'all talk about, you know, I, of course, I talk about Hayden a lot and my kids a lot and Logan a lot. But when, you know, y'all remember when he harvested his first turkey and he was kind of shy. And, and, you know, when we brought him up in here, yeah. everybody's making a big deal and he didn't know what to think about it. Of course, he was right. seven years old. Right. When we went home and cleaned that turkey and fried up turkey nuggets that night, he was strutting around the house like he was just a king. <laughs> I mean, we even when we said the blessing, you know, we thank you know Hayden for being able to harvest this turkey. And man, son, he bowed up then. Yeah. But, mm-hmm. but it's, yeah, it's really, it's, it's really, really cool. It's and, cool. You know, I I just look at and look, man. I I've, I've had comments with so many guys here lately. I'm like. On our ranch, we have 3,000 acres, which is, like, unbelievable to think that I have 3,000 acres here in South Florida. I've never killed a single deer on it. 
Um, <laughs> He's a gamekeeper, isn't he? Yeah. <laughs> you know, my dad killed one last year. Um, I'm actually paying to go hunt a duck hunt this coming weekend on a place at Okeechobee. When I got a bunch of ducks on my own ranch, I just don't want to shoot them. Because <laughs> I like seeing that field, that, that pond full of ducks. Um, there's just there's just something to this life. That's right. Of watching it, watching it grow. And I I love seeing my buck. Now, I've had my place for four years now. Whenever I first got it, you couldn't hardly see a deer. Now, daggum, I got deer I can ride up to and almost can feed. <laughs> um, and seeing those bucks that, that are now, you know, next year it'll be my fifth year, and I'm going to have some deer that are are proper, are really nice bucks. I might have to flip out there and dust one. But um, I bet you do. <laughs> when do those When do those deer down in that part of the world rut? Um, whenever they want to, we have those come in heat. I'm pretty sure we have those in heat year round. Um. We don't have any major weather. Like we don't have a heavy winter to kill off fawns. We in in the does. So the I'm real young sure fawns. I've seen, I'm sure I have seen spotted fawns twelve months a year on my property. So that means the fox is going to be breeding that doe 12, 12 months out of the year. Well, I don't think he can breed when, he doesn't, when he's got doesn't have hard horns. I, I think there's a testosterone wrong. thing going on there. But I've always heard that that South South Florida part of the world was no, like I, in I, July. I, I, hmm. uh, okay, so I don't know. I personally, with my own eyes, have seen three bucks running one doe. One of the bucks barely had a nub coming out of his head. The other one was about three quarters of the way grown in full velvet and the other one was in complete solid hard horn that was in venus florida watching them run that doe dog that doe just as if they were all full hard horns hmm. well you know what they were talking about so, uh, if the, a younger doe doesn't get bred during the rut then she comes in 28 days later right i mean maybe that could be spread out over a longer period down there because that's a that's a we crazy need, deer herd we need there. to call the deer lab and ask them yeah, that'd, that'd be a, be a good, good Bronson. It'd be a question for Doctor Know It All. So, uh, Robert, I've got <laughs> yeah. another question I wanted to ask you. And um, so, from your experience with uh, deer meat, it, do, you, do you, if you had a choice of uh, of killing a, a a a mature doe, or if you had a an old four or five year old buck, can you tell a difference in the quality of the meat or the taste of the meat between the two? Good question. You're looking at an absolute gold mine for a YouTube video. I personally, I, I, people are going to think he ain't never eaten deer meat before, but I'm telling you, I have killed a yearling doe before, and that joker be tough as shoe leather. And I've killed big bucks that, for whatever reason, have been tender. And on the vice versa, I've seen it totally different. You know, I've seen it reverse of that. Yeah. So I think it- some deer are just are just tough. I think the way you kill a deer is, was it a really good bang, dead shot that, you know, or did they was stress? that deer yeah. running yeah. does? Was he pumped up full of hormones in his testosterone? Had he been fighting, you know? Uh, was it just an old haggard doe that lived a hard life? I don't know, but or what there's they're none of it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Or what they're eating. And but so, could, at the very same time, if we take a, a, a deer from southern Iowa that has eaten nothing but corn and soybean and acorns its whole life and then put it up against a deer that eats gallberries and palmetto berries and forage down here in South Thorns. Florida, <laughs> he will eat some corn, I'll tell you that. But if you were just to take a deer from South Florida, I believe if you take care of both of them properly, if you take care of both of them properly, kill them, gut them out, hang them, cook them right. I don't think you will see near, near the difference that people say. Mm. And there's a reason why. Cattle, cattle build fat within the meat. Deer, the only fat they have will be on the outside of the meat near the skin. They don't have fat in their meat. You're only eating the protein, the actual lean meat. Well, if you have a grain-fed cow, all that flavor of the grain is in the fat in the meat and the marbling. 
Well, you don't have that. So the fat from the corn and soybeans that's stored in fat, that you don't eat that on a deer anyway. So I think you're just getting the flavor of the meat. You're not getting the flavor of the grain. But count on 2021 Deer Meat for Dinner doing a video comparing a grain-fed doe from Iowa to a public land, no corn, no nothing doe down here in South Florida. I think that'd be great content. Just put that and, on the docket. And I said uh, thorn, not corn, but yeah. <laughs> so, eating thorns down there. So I noticed Lanny oh, was, well, was uh, I, he was just Googling and he got the URL aged deer meat for dinner. Yeah. <laughs> Hey, I, I, but you know, Robert, you even lighten me again. I, I mean, I don't know how many deer I've cleaned. I mean, hundreds. And, you know, I know the fats on the outside of the meat. I know the beef, you know. Dudley Wine, he never told me that it just It makes perfect sense. It makes perfect sense. It really does. Hmm. Hmm. Well, you know, and everything is an opinion. I talk with confidence. I talk like I like I have the answers. But it's not everything we're saying is opinion. If there was an answer that means someone could be right. No one is right. We right. all have opinions and we all do this. That's Human why there's so many different options and that's why we freaking love it so much. That's kind of... Uh, you, you can never know it all. That's yeah. kind of how we do at Gamekeepers. We, we like to read the science and we also like to infer things on our own. Yeah, and, and, uh, right. Just word of mouth and talking to other hunters and gamekeepers and, and learning. So but you're right, Robert. You never quit learning. Uh, and, you know, I've been doing it my whole life. So, so Bobby's older than I. He's right. been doing it longer than I. Yeah. Well, <laughs> so it seems to me that the the care of the meat, the oh, how, yeah. you, how you take care of it, is probably going to play a big role in this, too. I agree. I know, Robert, yeah, saying you want to get them cooling down quick, you know. That's the best way to put it. Right. Yeah. yeah. You know, so, if you can shoot a deer like, you know, old Numero Uno, I put it right on the – right on the white patch and let her rip. I mean, that deer literally was DOA. I mean, mm -hmm. or D, or D uh, on his head never even rolled over. He fell right on his feet. Now you'd have to imagine there was no buildup of anything. That was just alive, then dead. Within, I would say, from less than five minutes from the time of the shot, you saw the video where I gutted him out. Everything was gutted out. He started to cool down. Mm -hmm. We got him opened up, cooled down, and then and then skinned out the next day. I mean, that's about as good as it's going to get. There's no gut matter on the inside of the chest cavity, swathing around. Uh, I mean, he was killed fast, gutted out fast, cooled down fast. That's, that's about as good as it gets. So, Robert, uh, one of the things, Lanny was telling me that you've got this 3,000 acres and you had another farm, he thought, in in South Georgia. And so yes, what, what we wanted to offer to you is uh, we'd like to work with you in, in trying to help you make uh, some of those places a little better. In, in, in other words, help you with some of the spring and fall plantings and and uh, minerals and, and trees and just the whole nine yards of what, what, from our perspective, of loving on the land is, and we call, we call that being a gamekeeper. But uh, we'd love, at some point, we'd love to, if we could, help you with that. For sure. One million percent. Um, so we have two different properties. I have my ranch in, in South Florida, which has its own unique set of circumstances and difficulties for planting. And then my dad has like our little family farm. It's a hundred acres up in South Georgia, Southeast Georgia. And he's got a 32 acre, um, uh, tillable piece. It's a hundred acres, but 32 acres of it is tillable. And he leases it out to a farmer and that farmer plants either cotton or tobacco or whatnot. But for all intents and purposes, that 32 acres creates no food and no habitat for the game. I, my dream would be to work with mossy oak and plant some, some beautiful oak trees and native grasses and turn that 32 acres into a magnet for mature deer where they can feel comfortable, where they can feed, where we can have a couple nice food plots, where we can plant some trees and put my dad's grandkids' names on it. And one day we can put his great grandkids' names on it, and those trees can have a meaning. And um, to to work with 
Moss Yoke on this would be so special. And I don't know if y'all watched the show, but I put that commercial in there uh, with Mr. Fox Hayes yeah. where he was talking about what a man does in his, does in his life lives on long after he's gone. And what we're going to do, we can take that barren ground and build something special that grows up into a very, very beautiful part of our family. Well, that's well said. Yeah, count and, uh, me in. You got the A team here too with old Tree Dud and Bio Bobby. So <laughs> we need. We got Austin. Yeah, we need to. We need to roll up our sleeves and, and help. Yeah. And, uh, so let's just plan on doing that. I thought I'll look to Lanny to kind of he's he's your communicate point of communication, and we'll we'll make a plan and and get his credit card, Lanny, and we'll go and make sure we. <laughs> I think he's gonna trade out in seafood. It sounds like. <laughs> No, oh, this will be. This we like, we like be seafood. Fun. We like too. spiny lobsters yes. and mutton snappers. Yeah. yeah so, <laughs> so maybe we can do. We're, we're going to have so much fun. Yeah, we're going to have a lot of fun. We got really. the TV crew sitting over here. Uh, if, if they'll wake up, it, but we can. Y'all need some po- coffee. Possibly, we could look at doing a television show with yeah, with Robert. Good. I think that'd be re- very interesting. And so. love to hear the story of his family farm and you know what it meant to him growing up. And I know I've seen your videos where you take your your girls back there. That's probably the squirrel hunting video Dudley it was is. talking about. It's yep. super cool yeah, to see that because yeah. I mean you know uh, we love hunting, we love wildlife, but the, you're like this is all about a lifestyle, you know, that we want to perpetuate and get more people involved in. So we're really proud yeah, that we met you and, and proud of what you're doing out there. Uh, and and look forward to a, a great long relationship. The best way to put it, for sure. Man. I think Bobby might even um, take you turkey hunting one day. Well, now hang on. Maybe we could go to make them. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we love turkey hunting, and you know you have all the species here. We have Osceola's on our place. My dad's got Easterns on his place. There's Easterns. We have a lot of places on Easterns, but. I'm really seriously considering doing a tour all around the U.S. this year and killing all this, you know, hunting for all the species of turkeys. Yeah, that's And uh, I know that would make my cameraman Austin and my wife Sarah the happiest people in the world because <laughs> those two are just jacked up crazy for a turkey. I love it, but again, I mean, I like the process. I like finding them, calling them. Once they're there, once they're at 15, 20 yards, you're, you're almost like, it's anticlimactic. you are done <laughs> yeah, we sure love it. So. It is awesome. It well, is let, awesome. And I, I appreciate you guys taking the time to call me and spend some time. This is uh, this is what this is what it's all about. That's Good exactly right. Memories. Good, good point. Yeah. Well, I've enjoyed uh, getting to know you. Yeah, we this, appreciate you being on this through week. this today. So, uh, well, Dudley, have you, you got so anything much, else to ask? No, I'm just I'm I'm looking forward to uh, helping you improve your your family property and uh you know just holler at us uh we can bounce ideas back and forth and uh you know i I heard you might want to get a native grass thing going we can help you with that so yeah no doubt about it well good yeah i will uh i'll get you guys i'm actually going up to georgia to to look at a boat and then we're going oh my gosh it's such a cool video coming up next week i'm not letting that one out of the bag yet though uh it's going to be an amazing video um, but I'm going up to look at a new boat in South Georgia. Then I'll shoot over to the farm. I'll take a bunch of like aerial pictures and I'll get a bunch of video. I'll give you some dimensions. Uh, then you can look at it on, on whatever topographical map. So you can see elevations and whatnot. And then you guys can come up with sort of a plan and we'll start, uh, We'll start making it happen. That sounds good. Hey, do us a favor when you're there. Grab a soil sample. All you got to do is run out there with a shovel and what, get a little Ziploc bag? Yeah. yeah after a, out of a couple places in that 32-acre field, it'll get us uh, off the start blocks pretty quick, I think. Oh, yeah. Cool. We will do that. We will awesome. do that ASAP. Well, man, we sure appreciate you taking the time to talk to us today, Robert. We we really proud of you, you know, what you're doing and, and proud you came up and spent some time with us and look forward to doing this more in the future. Absolutely. Thank you guys so much. It's been a pleasure and an honor. All right, you guys have a wonderful day. You too. Yep. We'll talk to you soon. Enjoy Thanks, it. Robert. Thanks, Robert. Thank you. Bye-bye. Well, I'm hungry now. Wow. He is, he's got story. some energy, man. Yeah, he does. It's a, it's a good story. It's a great story. And really, his goal, of again, is just promoting the lifestyle and getting as many people involved as he can. So so if a guy's listening to this and wants to see more, he just goes to YouTube. Yeah, or you and, can Google Deer Meat for Dinner or go to YouTube and type in Deer Meat for Dinner. And his brother's uh, Blue Gabe. Uh, and I think Blue Gabe, he's got a lot. Uh, I guess Robert 
its content's a lot more deer hunting, and then Blue Gabe's got a lot of blue water stuff. Now, I will say, Robert's got a lot of stuff on there. He's got bluefin tuna, uh, squirrels, you know. He's definitely he the, the epitome, gamut. yeah, of catch, clean, and cook, you know, mm-hmm. for sure. Yeah. Or field to plate, whatever you want to call it, so. Well, uh, I can't imagine 3,000 acres down in that part of the world. That is. I think it's a working cattle ranch, um, for what he was telling me. We should have asked him about a long tail cat. Oh, God, we'll have him on again. You know he's seen one. Yeah. <laughs> well, he might have seen Bigfoot, too, yeah. excited as he gets. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I just I love his whole message. I do, too. It's it a great good. message. It really is. It, it was great to have him here. Well, so I don't think we have a – we were so excited about having him. And Dudley's, yeah, we don't have an Dudley's been on went, – went hiking one day this week, and so we don't have an Ask Dudley He's been question. You know he's been tracking down one of the biggest trees in Alabama. Went and posted up over there, didn't you? Yeah, found it. Found um, it. In, uh, over in a national forest in Alabama. Alabama. It's, it's name shall – you can figure it out yourself. <laughs> but uh, so tulip, I've been going it, there over the years uh, – and and just love it. Uh, I like to hunt, but I also like to backpack and camp and that Me kind too. of thing. Me and too. Being that I'm a tree nerd, I like old growth forests, so I'm I'm always going to search and find those. Uh, there's a white oak over there that I'm putting it pre Civil War. Where is it? I hadn't seen it yet. Uh, it's it's near the falls. Is it and, okay? Uh, I have to go check uh, it out. It it finally kicked the bucket. So oh. I'm, I'm, Took my pictures with it and everything, but it's got mushrooms growing up the side. Yeah, the canopy's starting to fall out. So how old do you think it is? Uh, I, I would guess 300 years old. Whoa. Well, that would be and way then, prior to the... And there's a poplar over there mm-hmm. that is supposed to be over 500 years old. Mm. And I used to go check on it and stand under it and take selfies. And I won't even go near it anymore. I, I kind of feel guilty for stepping on its roots. <laughs> but uh, my, my buddy Evan and I sat there uh, at a waterfall eating our lunch, uh, overlooking this big tree. Yeah. And we counted over 50 people that walked like three miles to get to it on a Saturday and they all just stand there and stand on the roots and take their pictures. And, just compacting the soil. Yeah. But, uh, you know, they're getting outside. No, walking, it's all you know, good. Going, so it's, uh, I think it's a good thing. I know it's a good thing. Yeah. Uh, you know, that tree's been a marquee feature in this part of the world for a long time. It's good to see people going and checking so, it out. So uh, I've been, act, you know, mostly camping and backpacking, but I think I'm going to start doing some public land hunting over there. Too. I'm so proud of you. We're going to get Bobby on public land one day. Ah, never mind. That ain't going to happen. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah. Well, yeah. I've, 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 got, I've got, uh, well, you know, too many other things. I you got, got options. Right That's what he right said. <laughs> But just like Robert, I'm, I, I love to see this influx of, of people starting to learn to enjoy the outdoors. Absolutely. Whether just be going on little day hikes or shooting something to eat it. That's right. That's well, there, I have learned, um, you know, since we, since I got this new little place that yeah. you guys. The, the uh, Ponderosa. Uh, that you guys. Oh, there it is. Uh, yeah. Yeah. That uh, there is a, you know, with my wife and with my daughter, there's a lot more to do on the property than just hunt. Yes, absolutely. There's year-round things that you can do and enjoy. And yeah. and I hadn't paid a lot of attention to that. Yeah. You know, when I was a kid, I knew about how much fun it was to walk down a creek and turn over rocks and all that. Right. But kind of got away from that for the last 30 years. And then now you're getting back. A little bit. It's the small things. It really is. Yep. Yeah, it really is. All right. Well, so cool. uh, what else? Do we have anything else that we need to cover? I don't know. We I think we hit a lot. Are we how long are we sitting at? So we could say, what did we learn? I I you know I I learned some stuff, but I think we just kind of went over what yeah. we learned. All of so. that was answered. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It really was. So I definitely learned. Let's before we go, Mac. You got one more commercial, don't you? So since you've been mm-hmm. practicing it, we might as well let him read that. So <laughs> All right, good. go ahead, Mac. Cue Absolutely. him up, Mac. Absolutely. Mac. Uh, Gamekeepers magazine's 156 pages. Cock full of useful information about wildlife you love and the sport you're obsessed with. Gamekeepers Magazine publishes quarterly, and for only $19.99, 
And Bobby did the math on this one for me. That's only a nickel a day. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so I also wrote that, and I, and I know there was a word I did not write it the way you just read. I think it. You, it was stocked, is what no, you were going for. Chalk, chalk, chalk. Oh, we're talking about gamekeepers here. This yeah. is we're, we're cocking guns, and, <laughs> and, and cocking hammers. Yeah, yeah okay. So. Well, there's an H in that word. Okay, I right, heard. Right, yeah, maybe it's so dark in here. I don't know. Yeah. Nonetheless, but, it's a nickel a day. Right, right? A, yeah, nickel a day. day. Yeah. It'll deliver right to your house, and uh, you'll never miss an issue. You can subscribe on GameKeepersClub.com. New website coming soon. There we go. Good job, Mac. Well, I appreciate that. All right, guys. So uh, that, that kind That's of does it. Yeah. yeah. Why don't you say goodbye, Dudley? Goodbye, Dudley. Get us out of here, Cleve. Thanks for tuning in to this week's episode of the Gamekeeper Podcast, and be sure to tune in again. Subscribe to Gamekeeper Farming for Wildlife magazine, and don't miss the Mossy Oak Properties Fistful of Dirt podcast with my good buddy, Ronnie Cuz Strickland.